I'd like to call the Oblock City Council meet, work session meeting to order. We have a couple of things that we want to uh, address before we go to our regular meeting. Uh, first thing is that we're honored to have Marquita Riggings from the Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind with us. I'm going to ask her to make her way over to the podium here, and she's going to, uh, to give us some news. Thank you for being here. Was, that was the, wa the timer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, before I get started, I want to make sure that our staff can access the interpreter okay. All right. All right, perfect. Um, I'm Marquita Riggins. Um, I serve as the regional director for the Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind Open Locker Regional Center. And tonight, I just wanted to come and just provide some updates to you um, about our services. Uh, we just completed our last fiscal year, um, 2002 to, I mean, 2022-2023, and we wanted to make sure that you guys had that information. Um, it's important for you guys to have this information because if for some reason you come across a consumer who is deaf, blind, or deaf and blind, we want to make sure that you have the resources to refer them to us. So in your packet, you have a copy of our consumer information on the right side, um, our regional center directory, and then also a copy of our magazine, our Sights and Sound magazine. On the right-hand side of your folder, you have what we consider our one-pager, which has all of our regional centers' information, along with upcoming um, ASL trainings, as well as other um, events that we have scheduled um, so far in 2024. So what I'll do is just go through very quickly our consumer information. When we look at our 2022-2023 fiscal year, here in our Opelika region, and in Opelika, when we say region, we cover five counties. We cover Chambers County, Lee, Macon, Russell, and Tallapoosa counties. Um, in our five county region, we served a total of 352 individuals who are deaf, blind, deaf blind, and um, who may be multi-disabled or early intervention. When we look at that number, we break that 352 down. We, we served a total of 88 individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing, 100 individuals who were blind or visually impaired, three individuals who were deaf and blind, um, and then 161 early intervention babies. And by early intervention, we mean these are babies who are um, birth to three years old who may have a developmental delay or some other um, disability. We also provided 75 or we served 75 students through our ASL classes. Um, our ASL, American Sign Language, those are community classes that we offer to um, the community. It's important that when we think about access and um, inclusion that we make sure that those barriers um, that may exist for our consumers who are deaf and hard of hearing, that we address those barriers. And so providing these ASL classes is one way to, um, to um, definitely address that barrier. When we look at our interpreting request, so interpreting, we have our um, regional center interpreter here today. Um, these are services that businesses reach out to us to provide for our consumers. So when they frequent a business, when they go to a doctor's appointment, or maybe the emergency room, wherever it is, businesses have the option to contact us for those interpreting needs. We field 309 interpreting requests. And I will say most of those requests were completed by Brittany Bassett, our interpreter coordinator. And then there were 15 requests that were not uh, filled. And that was either because Brittany was booked already or it was just an event that we just couldn't accommodate. Um, and those are things that we 
we hate to turn down interpreting requests because when we turn down an interpreting request, that means there's a possibility that a consumer can go without having effective communication access. And so those are one of the things that we definitely try to work on. When we look at our consumer count by county, in Chambers County, we serve a total of 39 individuals. Here in Lee County, we serve a total of 201 consumers. In Macon County, 16. In Russell County, 39. And in Tallapoosa County, 57. When we look at our other program, and the next program that I'm going to talk about is called ATAP. It's the Alabama Telecommunication Access Program. Through this program, we're able to provide free devices to individuals who are deaf, blind, or maybe have a dual sensory loss. It is income-based, and so we do use the federal um, poverty guideline um, to determine that income base. Um, also with this program, it provides either an iPhone, an iPad, or a landline device. And again, it's free of charge for consumers who meet those qualifications. Our goal was 48 and our, t our staff, our team, um, actually serve 50 individuals. And that is a program that we continue to hopefully um, grow um, in this new year. Um, and so that's, that is our consumer account for 2022-2023. Um, Through AIDB, there are three main categories that we provide services for um, in our, through our regional center. We have adult services, and with adult services, that's case management services. Um, it may be advocacy. Um, we also provide community workshops. We provide um, just any basic need that a consumer may have. Through our early intervention program, we, all, we offer 17 different services. And we connect families to therapy sessions, whether it's physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational, whatever it is, we connect the families to those services. With our early intervention services, those services are provided in their natural environment, so it's provided in their home, and it's free of charge for those families. And then we also provide resources to our public school system. So there are times when the school will reach out to us and say, hey, we need assistance with an individualized education plan. We have case managers, we have team members that can come out and provide that support for either the school or the family. Uh, we can also connect them to outreach services in our, through our Talladega office where we have uh, more specialized um, specialists who can come up, maybe provide some um, instructional training for teachers, or maybe work with the family one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so that is just the overview of our services. I do want to take a minute and just recognize my team that's here tonight. Of course, this is not all of our team members, but um, we have Debbie Thomas, our case manager for the deaf. Uh, Melody Wilson, our case manager for the blind. And then, of course, my right-hand one man, uh, Michelle Watley, who's our administrative assistant. And then, of course, we're joined here uh, with our interpreter coordinator, Brittany Bassett. Do you have any questions for me? Yep, Art McCoy, wh where are you uh, stationed? Where do you work out of? So we are located at 355 Dunlop Drive. So we're right there on the corner of Dunlop and Waverly okay. here in Oklahoma. And, and so do we have um, clients or uh, individuals that are living there full time? No, sir. So our, our regional center is just the access point. So um, we don't house any consumers there. Um, they just come in to access service or uh, we connect them to the resources out in the community. And so uh, Talladega was like the original so, yes, so Talladega is our main headquarters. I like to call that um, our main campus. In Talladega is where our president resides, um, all of our administrative team. We also have three public schools. We have the Alabama School for the Blind, School for the Deaf, and the Helen Keller School. And then we have our vocational training, the Alabama Industries for the Blind, um, which at the industries, they make all of the military neckties. And that workforce, is 70% blind or low vision. Um, and then we have our Mariana Green Henry um, Aquatic Center, which it is, um, it's an aquatic center, so we have our horses, our children go there for hippotherapy um, and other um, specialized therapies. 
and they actually live on campus there. We, right? They do. So our students, um, our school is a little bit different from the traditional public school. It is a public school, but it's, it's a resi residential program. So students have the option to reside in our dorms, or um, if they stay close by, they can commute right the bus. Uh, for those students who attend from our region, there are times where they have extended weekends, so the buses will go pick them up and they'll come home, they'll drop them off either at a location here in town or at our regional centers, um, or at our regional center, excuse me, and parents and their families pick them up from there. And they get a, a, a diploma at the, at the high school? Yes, they do. So when they graduate, just like our traditional um, public school, our students graduate with a high school diploma. Some have honors, some have advanced, um, but it's just like the public school. And, and so how do they do the next level? Do they, do y'all help them with the next level? We do. So when students graduate from our um, School for the Blind, Deaf, or the Helen Keller School, with our Helen Keller School, it's a little different because there those students have either a dual sensory loss or they're multi-disabled in addition to being deaf, blind, or deaf, blind. Um, so, but for our students who graduate from our um, Alabama School for the Blind or Deaf, um, they have a choice. Some of them choose to go on to the next level to college. Uh, we have our gentry facility there. It's a vocational training program. Um, so some may choose to take some of our college prep courses there before they take that next step. Um, and then some, those who graduate from our school from the Deaf, they choose to go to Gallaudet University, which is in Washington, D.C. It's one of the premier um, Deaf universities in the country. I just, I'd like to express my appreciation for what y'all do. Thank you. And we're so glad to have you in Opelika. What a handsome facility you have, and uh, we're so glad you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And we're, we're glad to be here um, at, in Opelika. Of course, um, AIDB has always served this area. However, we didn't have a physical location in this region. And so just last year, we opened up um, our regional center. And so now our consumers, they have a place to call home. Well, thank you for what you do. We are, we are, as the mayor said, really appreciative of, of what you do here and then what you do at the other places. I mean, that's, uh, that's something they can't get without people like you and your staff. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Okay. Um, next, we're going to have Chief Healy come talk to us about a – um, resolution that we have on the agenda. He's going to give us some uh, more details about it. Good evening. We've got a lot of information to throw at y'all in a short amount of time. So um, we do have a complete packet of the information, the, the presentation, the proposal in front of you um, that has a lot more information, obviously, than I'm going to be able to go over with you here in a few minutes. But I will try to kind of walk you through the reorganization and some of the whys behind the what. Before I really get into it, I think it's important to talk to you and kind of enlighten you, I guess, on how this, this whole thing started. So just the next month will be three years that I've been the police chief. And when the mayor and Mr. Motley sat me down in the mayor's office to offer me this job, they only had one ask. They had one thing that they wanted to make sure that I did. And that was to make sure that we had as many police officers policing on the street as possible. We didn't want to be an organization that had a lot of wasted spots, so to speak. We needed to be out on the streets policing. So immediately I went back, and, and it's kind of funny that they, they asked that of me because in my, my hiring process, when I sat down on an oral board, they asked me to present a 90-day plan. What would I do in 90 days? And one of the things I put on there was about reorganization. Are we effective and efficient? Well, I don't know what this says about me as a police chief, but that 90-day plan turned into a three-year project. So uh, it took a little bit longer than, than 90 days, but, but here we are. When I first sat down and, and started looking at this and how, how do I make sure that we are doing what the mayor and Mr. Motley want, we started to immediately look at our internal processes. Our, how, are we, how are we doing things? Are we doing things the best way that we can? Are we effective? Are we efficient? Um, 
how is our culture inside of the police department? Are we getting along? Is the information getting from one place to the other, you know, effectively? And unfortunately, we were pretty quick to realize that the answer to that was no. Yes, we knew how to police. We policed very well. We trained very well. And we had a lot of great equipment. But we had a lot of work that we needed to do internally to be a better police department. And if we functioned inside our police department a little bit better, then we would obviously be able to serve our citizens even better. And that was kind of the whole crux of what we were trying to do by studying this, uh, by, by trial and error over the last three years. Everything that we have done has been with this reorganization in mind. Everything from how we do our community-oriented policing stuff, the, the things that we did with Dr. Evans that you guys so graciously allowed us to do, um, goes into this. You know, what kind of a relationship are we building with our community, and how are we serving them? I always ask this question when I'm in front of people in the, in the community. If we're doing our best job as a police department for you in your neighborhood, what does that look like for you? And, you know, we've been able to do a lot of tremendous work on community-oriented policing and things over the last couple of years that have really brought, I think, the police department and our community a whole lot closer together. And I think that we're, we're at that apex right now where we've got a lot of dominoes lined up, ready to fall with a positive vote tonight. And um, we're ready to, to kick over that first one so that we can get a lot more things going. And I think we'll see even more growth um, over this next several years. So kind of digging into that, um, I want to talk first before I get into the specifics of any one position um, about the overall numbers. When, when you read through this whole plan and, and we get done talking about it, uh, as we sit right now today, we are a 100-man uh, police department. We're allowed to have 100 sworn police officers. Uh, if this goes through and we ultimately hire for all of the positions that we have, we will be at 101. We're only adding one additional uh, police officer. What we have done, though, is we have taken and looked at the structure within the police department and what positions do we have that we don't necessarily need. Can we work with a few less chiefs, so to speak, so that we can have some more Indians? And so we were able to, to come up with ways and, and have been afforded opportunities to test and evaluate how we can do that. One of the examples that we did do uh, was we were able to readjust the, the schedule for our canine officers. We did that starting in July, and we did a four-month test period from July to October to see would we be able to have more police officers on the street during the busiest time of day. And the answer to that was yes. There was two other things that, that coincided with that that were tremendous uh, side effects or, or benefits. The first is because of the type of schedule that we put them on, we were able to cut our overtime hours by 75%. So that means we saved a lot of money in our salary budget by adjusting just four people. Four people, 75% reduction in overtime in four months. Um, the other thing that it did was more than doubled the amount of activities that our canine officers did for the entirety of 2022, okay? In, from July 1st to November 1st, they more than doubled that activity in just four months. So that means we were able, by again, adjusting a schedule slightly, we were able to improve the work performance of just those four people and what they can produce as far as answering calls for service and, and in their case, deployments of our canine unit. So that is just a, a small sample of what we can do if this whole thing comes to fruition. And imagine if we're able to do that throughout our entire department. Um, again, we will go to 101 sworn police officers. Our civilian side will change drastically. Uh, we looked at all the positions. There's some that we have done away with, some that we had to modify uh, what the job descriptions were to, to line them up more with uh, what those folks were actually doing. We found out that we were funding positions that um, more positions than we needed for those particular spots. So again, we're going to do away with those. 
but we will increase the number of civilian employees by 10 at the end of this. So um, the quick budget number looking for um, increasing our 2024 budget, even with those 10 civilian employees and one extra police officer uh, through the other cuts and, and adjustments we've done, we're only going to increase our salary budget by $214,000. So pretty, pretty impressive to me when we look at the amount of uh, moving around and work that we're going to do. You have, along with your packet, there was a single piece of paper that is kind of the new, what the new organizational chart is. And I want to walk through that with you a little bit and talk about the things that you see that are in red. Those are, those are changes. Those are uh, new positions or adjusted positions. The first one that you're going to see pretty much right under the police chief, um, under the community relations coordinator, is that we're asking to hire a community relations specialist. Y'all know Allison Duke. Y'all know the work that she has done on social media with the traditional media, uh, the impact that she has had on marketing and branding our police department to be forward-facing and very professional. She does a tremendous job. The side effect is that now everybody expects us to continue that and for it to get to be more and more and more. When we're transparent, people like that, but they want transparency all the time. It requires a tremendous amount of work. Um, from January to the end of October, she had uh, spent about 700 and some odd hours outside of her normal, regular 40-hour work week just being able to accomplish what she does. So we need to get her some help. So that's why we're asking for a community relations specialist, somebody that can come in her, help her so we can even take this thing to the next level. Moving down into looking at what I call our command staff, uh, in the past we have had uh, myself, then the assistant chief, and then four division commanders and four captains. We needed to adjust that. We had an opportunity when Rob Cook left uh, in February and retired to see could we do this with three division commanders. The answer was yes, we could. We could adjust some responsibilities, uh, move some of those job responsibilities closer back to where they needed to be. Instead of just creating work for a position, we need to figure out what the positions are and then assign the work appropriately. So we are going to eliminate one of the division commander uh, spots. To do that, we needed to move some of the units um, underneath those division commanders around a little bit, and we moved our training section and our SRO section uh, under patrol. We also are creating a, another lieutenant position in patrol that is what we call a special services lieutenant. This lieutenant is going to take care of our fleet, um, ordering all the cars, making sure that we get all the equipment, P and e ing equipment. Uh, he will oversee all of the specialized units like canines. In the future, when we get to be full of police officers, we want to have a traffic unit again. Uh, he'll manage that traffic unit. Um, any other specialized units, SWAT. Um, there's some things uh, you'll see down there in red also under the special services lieutenant that we titled public safety cadets. Um, these are civilian positions that uh, I'll talk about in just a second that we're going to add to um, our police department that this lieutenant will manage them. He's also kind of the liaison with our court system. Um, that lieutenant will be monitoring, uh, make sure all the paperwork flows back and forth, monitor our inmates that are over at the Lee County Jail. Um, we have a sergeant right now that monitors the bill that they send us every month for those inmates and so far this year just because he's been double checking the paperwork has saved us eighteen thousand dollars just by double checking the paperwork and not assuming that it's correct so that'll be a, a huge responsibility of this lieutenant this creative lieutenant position since we moved the lieutenant position um, under patrol there's some added responsibilities that we need to add to our training section y'all know that recruiting quality candidates in police work now is very difficult and we had to ramp up our recruiting efforts. How do we recruit the best candidates to come to this police department? 
Um, so we've got a lot of things in motion. Um, we had kind of hoped that we might have a little sneak peek of something for you tonight, but it wasn't quite ready. But we've been working on um, some recruiting efforts that you'll hopefully be seeing here in the next couple of weeks that are going to set us apart from other agencies and, and piquing people's interest to come work for us. Not only with recruiting people, the hiring process over the last couple of years because of police reform has changed. It is a lot more detailed and in-depth, and it requires a lot more work uh, as far as background investigations and time spent uh, vetting this and validating that. So it requires a lot, of, a lot of effort. Because of that effort, we're also um, asking to create a lieutenant position in our training section. So right now we have a training sergeant and a full-time training officer and a part-time training officer. We'd also like to add to that a training lieutenant, again, who's going to be a little bit more involved in, in um, taking care of all these things. Uh, we're also going to add to him building a retention program. If we're going to get quality people and get them in the door and get them to be police officers at Oklahoma Police Department, we need to take better care of them and keep them. We need to build a retention program. A big piece of that retention program is officer wellness, you know, physically, spiritually, uh, psychologically, financially, whatever it takes, whatever things that we can do to enhance their quality of life, so to speak, not just inside the police department, but outside the police department. We're taking care of them. They're going to take care of our citizens out here on the street when they're answering calls. So, again, that, that's going to require a lot more work, and that's why we're asking for that training lieutenant. Ultimately, underneath the, the patrol division commander is going to be, right now it's four lieutenants, the four patrol shifts, um, and moving those two other units and asking for those two additional lieutenants, he will be responsible for six lieutenants. He will supervise about 80% of the men and women of our police department. Uh, in order to do that, when I was sitting down with Mr. Motley and we were looking over this, he made the comment that if, if that person's going to do that much work, we probably need to pay them a little bit more. Well, in our command structure, it's kind of a para paramilitary structure, you can't have captains and pay them different amounts of money. You need to be paying them about the same. So in order to be able to to compensate that person uh, for the amount of work they're going to do, we, we ask to create a major position. That major position will just be a division commander. The captains won't report to him. There still will be three different divisions within the police department. Um, the public, public safety cadets that are underneath the special services lieutenant, this is a program, again, they're going to be civilian. This, we're looking to pick high school kids, folks that are young in college that want to get into police work. We all know that the worst time, especially for young men, is between 18 and 21. You can't be a police officer until you're 21. You get out of high school, there's a lot of time in there that you can make some mistakes that can prevent you from being a police officer. So we want to create or have created a program that will help us recruit some kids coming out of high school that ultimately want to be police officers. We will keep them engaged, keep them part of our police department. We will give them some jobs to do while they're here. Part of that job will be training, learning, so that when they turn 21, they'll be able to officially become police officers, and then we'll be able to send them to the academy and get them certified. Um, we also want to get them you know, take advantage of the education benefits that the city has and, and get them enrolled in college and get them, you know, planning to have a long career with us at the Oklahoma Police Department. So it's kind of a, a long-term recruiting strategy, if you will, but it's looking at picking those those folks, those homegrown folks that, that want to come to work in our community and, and be involved. <clears throat> if you go over to underneath the detective division, You'll see two things in red. The first one is an intelligence analyst, electronic forensics, um, digital forensics. This is a civilian position that will help us uh, do a lot of intel data collection. Um, cyber is here. <laughs> Y'all know that. We deal with a lot of cases that involve cyber activity of some sort. Uh, we dump cell phones to get information. Um, to help further cases, we're scouring Facebook and other social media platforms um, for information about crimes that occurred. 
this person is going to be able to help our detectives do that, that's going to be their main job. So instead of the detective having to spend hours upon hours doing that work, we're going to have somebody that's a civilian employee that is trained in how to do that more effectively. And those hours that the detectives were sp are spending now doing that, they're going to be able to better work their cases, maybe have some more positive outcomes on more cases and build better cases because they're going to be doing police work instead of spending time just sitting in front of the computer in the office. A uh, little bit further down in the detective division, under the vice and narcotics section, you will see um, under the sergeants where it says we have one current and we're asking for one additional sergeant. This is another additional position. <coughs> um, the, the types of crimes that our vice and narcotics section investigate, it's all proactive stuff. They're, they're quality of life crimes. You know, folks dealing drugs, prostitution, illegal gambling. I've been up here before you recently in the last couple of months talking about some illegal gambling machines. You know, that continues to be a problem at other locations other than the ones that we've already talked about. We need people that are dedicated to going out here and finding these things, getting it closed down, getting it cleaned up to encourage or, or to better the quality of life of our citizens. Um, we just had a discussion in city staff this morning about the medical marijuana dispensaries, you know, that potentially may be popping up. Um, you know, there's all these synthetic types of marijuana and CBD and things like that that can be sold at gas stations now, but there's rules behind all that stuff. And we need people to be able to investigate and enforce those rules to make sure that that work is being done. Um, narcotics types of investigations, you can't do from eight to five. It requires all kinds of strange hours, a lot of long hours. Um, we really have to look at modifying schedules and, and things like that. So to be able to have those detectives focused on those efforts, we need more supervision of them so that we can get all that stuff coordinated and they can build uh, strong investigations to hopefully get some of this stuff out of our community. Um, last, if you look over in the administrative uh, division, y'all a couple of months ago had already approved for us to hire a social work coordinator, which we have done. Uh, Ms. Yarby Town is, is now on staff. She started at the 1st of November. And to say that the impact that she has had in just the month and a half that she has been here has been tremendous. Just in the month of November, she followed up on 36 cases that our officers had been involved in that required further follow-up on, on a social service side to provide further resources to somebody, again, to improve their quality of life. She was able to, in 18 of those 36 cases, refer them to another organization, somebody that could help them further, whether it be mental health, child care, uh, rent assistance, all types of different things that she is able to lead, guide, and direct people towards. She's also spent, um, had 10 different meetings with different organizations. And these are organizations that can provide resources to our citizens to help them uh, navigate life a little bit better, help them if they're in a, a domestic violence situation, something like that. That, that can provide those folks help outside of police interaction. She's prevented some 911 calls. Um, we had a situation where a lady continued to call 911 about every day, every other day. Um, ultimately, she, if she was taking her medication, she was fine, wasn't calling 911. Uh, Yarby was able to build a plan with her family and her health care provider to make sure that she got her medicine consistently. We haven't had a 911 call from her since. And again, every time she's not calling 911, we have police officers that can go do other work. So, tremendous help. Um, under Yarby, and we had this was the plan from the beginning when we looked at hiring a social work coordinator, um, that we would ultimately want to bring some social workers that would work under her to help further this program. Um, I think we have uh, tapped into something that is going to really change the dynamics of for citizens in our community by focusing on this piece of work. You know, our officers love Yarby. They are calling her, they're emailing her, they're texting her, and she's able to follow up on these things. And we can do a whole lot more good work if we have some more people to work with her. So that's that's what the ask is for them. I know I'm 
I'm past six, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. But this is important, y'all. This is, this is very important for us to take the next step, for us to grow into being the premier police department in the state of Alabama. This is what we need to do. We have done a lot of work. And this is not just me. This is the entire command staff, several officers, detectives, and captains, and lieutenants, and sergeants, and officers here that have been part of this project. We have talked to everybody. Everybody had some input into this. There was a lot of work that went into this. And we believe that if we're given the opportunity to be able to put this plan into place, that the quality of service that the Opelika Police Department provides to our citizens is going to grow exponentially. It is going to be fantastic. You will have people calling you and say, how does your police department do the work that they do if we get a chance to do this? So I appreciate your time. I will answer any questions if y'all have any. Anytime. If you got some passed tonight, please don't hesitate to call me, email me, whatever. Come see me, and I'll be happy to answer anything I can. Any questions before I sit down and be quiet so y'all can move on? Thank you. Anybody? Any yeah, questions? Just a, a quick question, but first comment. Uh, quality service from uh, the OPD is uh, top-notch already. I can't wait to see what the future is going to be. Um, this looks great. Just for a quick bit of clarification, the two future – uh, social work, are they included in that plus 10 you were talking about in the civilian, or is that on top of? That is, that's included. Okay, that's, perfect. This is all inclusive. Well, this is a lot of good work, a lot of uh, explanation, and, and we appreciate it. It's uh, pretty straightforward once you explain yeah. it to us. Yeah, I hope so. All right, thank you all. Uh, thank you. We'll... Um, move straight into our uh, regular council meeting. So I would like to call the Opelika City Council meeting of December the 19th to order. Uh, call roll, please. Mr. Jones. Mr. Adams. Present. Ms. Moore. Present. Mr. Edgar. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. President, per the City Code of Ordinances, Section 2-161.1, individual council members will be allowed to participate in a City Council meeting by electronic means. If he or she is unable to be physically present due to an illness, that meaning sickness, disease, or other physical condition that causes a council member to face significant difficulties attending a meeting in person. Mr. Rauch has petitioned the council to attend this meeting by electronic means due to an illness and is participating from his home. Mr. President, any member of the council that is physically present shall make a motion to approve or disapprove the absent council member's request. Upon adoption of the motion to approve, the council member's full participation in the meeting by electronic means shall be allowed and recorded in the minutes of the meeting. If the motion is to disapprove the specific aspect of the policy that would be violated by the council members' proposed participation by electronic means must be stated and recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Either motion will require a second, would also be subject to debate, and would require a majority vote by the physically present member. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there a motion to allow uh, Mr. Rouch to participate by electronic means? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Have any call roll, please. Mr. Al. Aye. Ms. Moore. Aye. Mr. Edge. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Thank you. Mr. Rao, are you available? Here. Thank you. Hope you're getting to feeling better. Uh, we're going to do uh, go ahead in our meeting. The first thing I'm going to do is ask uh, Mr. Hamlet Barnes from the Mustard Seed Faith Center to make his way to the podium to the left. And at the same time, we have a special guest in today in Logan Jones, who will lead us in the Trinity, or from Trinity Christian Church, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you all would stand. Mr. Mayor, Councilor, uh, there's been a change in the, uh, the person that's going to pray. I have uh, Shelton, uh, Logan Shelton, he's going to uh, pray the invocation at this time. Thank you, Matt. Almighty God and gracious Lord, we enter into your presence this evening and we give you great thanks. We know that of one blood you've made all the nations of the earth and you've pointed their bounds and in your providence you've displayed your goodness by giving rain and sun upon the just and the unjust. We thank you that it's been appointed to us to live in this city. We thank you for the sacrifices of those who've gone before us and labored to make it a good place to live and we thank you for your blessing upon their work. We bring before you the business of this evening. We ask that you'd make the police department uh, very effective in keeping our streets safe and that you'd bless all the labors that they do. 
We pray for the council members as they make decisions. Please give them wisdom. We trust your promise that if any man lack wisdom, he should ask. Of you who give liberally and upbraideth not, help them to use the money that's been entrusted to them as if it were their own, and please enable them to put it to good resources. We pray that our cities, our city would be safe and it would be a place of blessing, and above all, we pray that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ would be preached openly in all the churches, that it would be a place where you are worshipped in his name, and that sinners are converted unto you, and that the saints are built up in edification and holiness. Lord, please forgive our many sins. We know that they rise up to heaven, but we ask that you would blot them out and that you would grant your blessing unto us for Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. You all have uh, previously received a copy of the minutes of the September, the, excuse me, December the 5th, 2023 council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Having none, they'll stand as presented. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, members of the council, uh, each council member has a copy of the city's financial summary reports for September and October. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me, Mr. Motley, or Ms. Boyd. And um, we do have a couple of presentations to make tonight, but before we do that, I wanna ask our city administrator, Joey Motley, to come forward and offer the uh, 2023 November monthly building report, Joey. Good evening, Council uh, Mayor. Uh, another great report for uh, for November. Two months in, our uh, monthly total of building permits was thirteen million six hundred forty-one thousand six hundred eighty-one dollars and eighty-seven cents. And of that, once again, the driving number was uh, new single-family homes at forty-five, which brings our total. Uh, year to date for two months, 97. Used to be a good yearly total, Mayor, uh, years ago. We talk about that, and uh, I guess we'll get used to it one day, but it still looks good every month. Um, year to date number for housing is $22,141,381.80 for total per meeting of $70,482,342.91 year to date total per meeting. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Thank you. Like the first <coughs> group up here, I want to express a uh, Merry Christmas to each of you. I love living in a community where we celebrate Christmas. Now, I got to, some friends that have my job in other places, they celebrate the holiday. Man, in Opelika, we celebrate Christmas, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, I hope all of you have a great Christmas and a prosperous, successful new year. All right, first, and this, I know it's going to bring a smile to our face. I want to invite Jim Young from the Opelika Pickleball Club. Sam, you better come up here. Joey, you better <coughs> come up here and help us because this will be something special. And um, <coughs> y'all know we got in the pickleball business a few years ago, and. Um, I think we caught that wave, and uh, Jim, here you are back again, and you got something to present to the city. Yes, yeah, sir, I do. Um, Mayor Fuller, uh, Chairman Smith, distinguished members, uh, members of the city council, and other guests on behalf of the Oak Lake Pickleball Club, we'd like to thank you and the city. Uh, your investment in pickleball uh, is in our magnificent facilities uh, have provided us with the venue to give back to Opelika. Uh, our club is presently 730 members strong. Um, in 2023, we were able to produce 10 monthly tournaments. Um, all along, we produced this, uh, 
by producing the Alabama Senior Olympics, and since then they have reached out to us and Sam through Sam, and we're going to be the permanent host for the pickleball for the years to come and for other events too. So we're proud to announce that uh, we had uh, three pat two paddles at the Plex, the Alabama Senior Olympics, uh, untold dedicated uh, volunteer hours, not only of the pickleball club members. Uh, but from AO Tourism and the community, people have never played pickleball before. We put on a regional tournament here from USA Pickleball. We had 26 states come in. Um, we got a member group that, although the club doesn't do uh, charity work, we got a group of members that go to the food bank twice a, a monthly and, and do that, and then they picked up two families for Christmas. So we are involved in the community. We give back. Next year we're projecting, or this year we spent, um, or we put $21,000 worth of gutters on the pickleball facility. We just bought 6,000 more balls to add to our 4,000 balls, and so now we've got 10,000 pickleballs. And we don't use it just for the club, we give it to the entire community. Anybody that comes to Oakville out there to play pickleball doesn't have to buy pickleballs, and that's about $10, $3 a ball, so there you go. Uh, we had the courts clean for $3,600. But based on the figures from AO Tourism this year, with all of the tournaments and everything we've done, we brought an economic impact in of $1.3 million. So uh, we appreciate the city and the city fathers and giving back. So, These are the words of, uh, of Council Member Todd Rouse. And uh, I'm honored to, to be a part of this uh, that he said. I regret that I cannot be with you for this evening. When the City Council agreed to select citizens of different wards who exhibit character traits of each month, it seemed like an arduous task. With so many people in our community doing amazing things, it seems impossible to pick just one. But Shelly Tuff compassion isn't just a way of life, it's her superpower. Shelly has dedicated her life to showing compassion and helping children in need and showing them what true compassion and love looks like. Through her ministry, the Exodus Ranch, Julie and her family have been amplified the message of compassion through Christ throughout our community and state. The phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, 
conveys the message that it takes many people to build it to provide a safe, healthy environment for children, where children are given the security they need to develop and flourish, and to be able to realize their hopes and dreams. This requires an environment where children's voices are taken seriously, and where multiple people in the village, including parents, siblings, neighbors, teachers, community members, and policymakers, care for a child. We are honored that Sheila and her family choose to build her village right here in Opelika. We acknowledge her commitment to passion and we remain, <laughs> and we remain firm in our commitment to this beautiful village. It's, it's show. <laughs> I mispronounced it three times. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, it's really a nice town. Sorry, Todd. <laughs> City of Opelika. Your, your goodwill towards mankind and our city has not been unnoticed. We hope that others will see your good works and model your actions. Please be encouraged to continue making a difference in the city of Opelika and throughout this world. Presented by uh, December 2023, signed by the Mayor of Opelika, Sherry Fair. Thank you. If you do not know or have not heard of the Exodus Ranch, Google it, uh, and then you will find out the rest of the story. True character. Uh, okay, so this is a communication, Mr. Jones. Mayor, uh, city council members, um, I'm Mark Grantham with Habitat for Humanity and I have Jacob with me here tonight. We represent Habitat for Humanity and you know I could talk all day about it. I won't. I want to read just a, a letter of thanks to the leaders of this city. Um, I hope our citizens recognize you all for the great job that you do when you do great things and, and I want to do that tonight on behalf of Habitat for Humanity. Mayor Fuller and all of our council leaders, thank you for making affordable housing a priority for hardworking citizens in our community. Your advocacy and support of Habitat for Humanity and the Fuller Center for Housing this year has allowed together us to build six homes throughout our community, affordable nonprofit homes for hardworking families of our community. 
Without your help, it might have taken us six years to achieve this. Our mission is together we build homes, community, and hope. We are thankful for the partnership of the City of Opelika, Stone Martin Builders, West Frazier Lumber. This has allowed us to dedicate three new homes this past Friday to qualified, hardworking families. To the leaders of Opelika, thank you, and we are blessed to have great companies like Stone Martin Builders and West Frazier and engaged leaders like you in our community. So we just want to share a word of thanks, and we brought a poster that shows us a lot. We are thankful for our media partners also. Um, today's Opelika Auburn News has a collage of pictures and stories of what happened on Friday, and I know our Opelika Observer will have pictures and uh, stories this Thursday in the new, new paper that comes out. So we're just thankful for those community partners to help us show the good work that all do, and uh, we're very thankful for you and just wanted to share that. Thank you, and God bless you. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Another citizen with excellent character. Are there others like to speak? If not, we'll move on. General business, Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first item under general business is a request for alcohol license from Ohana Mart LLC doing business as Serrano's. This is a retail wine and retail beer off premise license. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? One question. I know we've had problems out at this venue before. I just want to make sure that our city has done its due diligence in making sure that this is not a repeat of what we've had before. Roll, please. Aye. Ms. Moore. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Routh. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Second item is a request for alcohol license for Texas Roadhouse Holdings LLC. Doing business as Texas Roadhouse. This is a restaurant, retail liquor, and retail beer on premise license. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a none. Call roll, please. Mr. Brown? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routh? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Third item is a request from Red Clay Brewing Company for a special event on 12-31-23. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a non-call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routh? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Fourth item is a request from the Opelika Chamber of Commerce for 2024 Food Truck Friday night from downtown Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Fifth item is a public hearing. This is a weed abatement assessment. Avenue A. I declare the public hearing to open. Anyone like speaking for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Fifth and final item is a public hearing. This is a weed abatement assessment at 120 Chester Avenue. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like speaking for or against this issue? Come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Uh, resolutions, Mr. Gunner. 
Mr. President, resolution number one approves travel expense report submitted by Denise Rogers of Municipal Court and Mayor Fuller. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number two authorizes the Public Works Department to purchase a three wheeled GPS robot from Tiny Mobile Robots US LLC at a cost not to exceed $41,390. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number three authorizes the Opelika Environmental Services Department to purchase 952 96-gallon uh, refuse carts from Totter LLC at an aggregate cost of $56,458. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, three years ago, the council approved a uh, contract with uh, Flock Group, LL, Flock Group Incorporated for a six camera uh, ALPR camera system. Uh, that contract is about to expire in the police department uh, originally purchased six cameras and wishes to add an additional two cameras for a total of eight cameras. And you have before you resolution number four, which would approve a quotation from the Flock Group Incorporated uh, for the hardware and software for this these camera systems at a total cost, and this is a three-year cost, of $98,800. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number five authorizes the police department to purchase 110 six hour nine millimeter pistols at a total cost of $99,715. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number six was the topic of the pre-meeting. Uh, excellent presentation from Chief Healy. Uh, you have the resolution approving the organizational chart of the uh, Opelika Police Department. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, the month of December has been an exceptional month. I think the mayor would agree for the Opelika Economic Development Office. And before you, uh, you have resolution number seven, which represents more good news. Uh, Mando America Corporation has announced a, another major project, which will involve a capital investment of approximately $13,762,000 and will create an additional 13 new jobs. You have before you resolution number seven, which approves certain tax abatements and exemptions for Mando America Corporation. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Mullen? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number eight is a resolution approving the renewal of my contract or employment contract as city attorney. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine-call roll, please. <laughs> Mr. Allen? 
Resolution number nine approves the reappointment of Judge Ben Hand for an additional two year term as, as part time municipal uh, judge. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine. Call roll, please. Mr. Adam? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 10 uh, grants a special use permit to AT&T to modify its facilities on its tower located at 3460 U.S. Highway 280 in Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Is this an um, existing tower, right? It okay. is. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 11 approves a weed lien in the amount of $163.71 against the property located at 4 Avenue A. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Resolution number 12 approves a weed lien in the amount of $199.56 against the property located at 120 Chester Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 13 approves approves a contract for services with the Arts Association of East Alabama. Uh, this resolution is on the table and would require a motion to remove from the table. Um, is there a motion to remove? I make a motion to remove. From we the have table. a motion. Is there a second? Then it will not be removed from the table. All right. It remains on the table. Uh, resolution uh, number 14 uh, approves a special appropriation to the Dream Day, Dream Day Foundation in the amount of $2,500 uh, for the uh, Martin Luther King Day festivities in February, in January, I'm sorry. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 15 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $2,500 to the Opelika Police Department for the purpose of creating a memorial honoring Amori Wiggins. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine. Call a roll, please. Mr. Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Ordinances, Mr. Gunner? Uh, the first ordinance is before the council for second reading. Uh, if adopted, this ordinance would modify the city council's order of business, also known as the agenda, and would create uh, rules for public comments at city council meetings and uh, rules of conduct for citizens participating in council meetings. Is there a motion for approval of uh, this amendment to the ordinance? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Either way. <laughs> Is there a discussion? Uh, I have discussion. Um, I just wanted to say I was disappointed that an uh, addition was not added to the agenda to allow communication from the council as well. I think when our citizens come forward 
and they provide communication, um, that is great, but for the council not to be able to at some point on the agenda, which is standard for um, most cities in, this, in the state of Alabama, um, a portion where the, the council has an opportunity to also speak uh, to the citizens as well as uh, to council members, I was disappointed that that was not um, added, to the, added to this particular uh, piece of uh, documentation. Thank you. Others? Call the roll, please. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Martin? Nay. Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Four ayes, one nay. Uh, the second ordinance is also before the council for second reading. It comes to the council with a positive recommendation from the Old Blanca Planning Commission. If adopted, this ordinance would rezone a 14.22 acre parcel of land located in the 3500 block of Waverly Parkway from an R5 district, which is a high density residential district, to a C2 GCP district, which is an office retail gateway corridor primary overlay district. Is there a motion for approval of the, this amendment? amendment? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Mr. Agee? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Is there any other business to come before the council? Um, I would just like to uh, encourage my uh, fellow council members that when we have on our next agenda the table item associated with Arts Association of East Alabama, that we need to uh, move this forward one way or the other. We have given them a couple of months now to provide sufficient information for us to make a decision. Um, we don't do this for other uh, organizations. I'm not sure why we are having to table this uh, council me meeting after council meeting, um, but it's disturbing to me. So I just would like to encourage us to be ready to make a decision at the next meeting. Thank you. Uh, the character trait of the month, as you heard earlier, was compassion, sympathetic pity, and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. Uh, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Is there a second? Second. C call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Moore. Aye. Mr. Agee. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. 